Greetings. I'm Matt Schwarzman. I'm a theater artist and educator based in New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome to episode five of my cultural activism vlog. I'm co-author of Beginner's Guide to Community-Based Arts. In this episode, we're going to look at the same issues brought up in the Beginner's Guide in the case study entitled Talk Back about the work of photographer and community activist Tori Reed in Denver, Colorado. In the story, Reed explained how she used photography to get people talking to one another across race, class, and age. This time, I found an organization that stimulates cross-community dialogue through theater. They're called the Mandala Center for Change. I hope you enjoy. Port Townsend is a small coastal town of about 10,000 regular residents located about 56 miles north of Seattle, Washington. Today, Port Townsend is a historic landmark with an economy driven mainly by tourism. They have funky festivals, beautiful homes, parades, and traditional crafts they count as their cultural assets. But behind this quiet and pleasant exterior, demographics are changing. Port Townsend is becoming polarized with a growing population of wealthy retirees and a shrinking population of young people and working people. These changes in the social fabric convinced this multi-generational, multicultural group of people to come together. That was 1999. And today, the Mandala Center is a multidisciplinary organization. They offer training in conflict resolution and consensus decision-making. They lead participatory theater workshops, and they have their own theater company, the Poetic Justice Ensemble. So join me now for my interview with the Mandala Center for Change entitled Di Difficult Dialogues. Hey, Mark, how are you today? Hey, Matt, I'm really well. <laughs> Good. Great, yeah. I would love to hear a little bit more about the Mandala Center today, and, and maybe you could start by introducing your colleagues. Well, uh, first I'll introduce uh, Jale Almayi, who is my wife, but also the co-director of the Mandala Center for Change, and Eamon Redding, who is a company member and a participant in several of our projects. So Jale, like with the We Are Here project that you were telling me about, how does dialogue and conversation factor into your process? Yeah, you know, it starts small, it gets big, and then it narrows again to the people who are most affected by the issue, usually a small circle of community members who are saying there's a problem. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that it was actually um, an anti-hate rally uh, near the beginning of the current administration that Mark and I attended. It was a rainy day. There were very few people, but there were um, about a handful or less of young transgender youth who were there and spoke out. And we began to understand that this is a, it's a problem, it's an issue. Healthcare access is an issue. Um, their mistreatment in the community, the invisibility in the community, and so it started there. And so Mandala Center began dreaming into how can we apply uh, theater as a way to initiate this dialogue. We took it out larger to the community to see who else would like to show up and be part of that conversation. And it's kind of a ball that starts rolling. It gains momentum. Um, and more organizers come to it until we have a core group of people who say, yeah, we're not only affected by it, but we're ready to commit and do a project. And the beauty of legislative theater is the roots are in theater of the oppressed. And that is a body of work that is designed for non-actors. So when we put out a call to be part of a theater project, you know, some people are like, ah, I'm not a theater person. But then they begin to come and be part of a conversation and using the tools and methodology of theater of the oppressed and creating a forum play, which is essentially telling your story. So the, the conversation then, you know, it starts small, it gets big, and then it narrows again to the people who are most affected by the issue to begin sharing their stories, creating a small play that demonstrates that problem, and then showing that to the larger community. So we had this legislative theater event, and we had um, like community officials and like city council members. Um, but um, 
like all sorts of different uh, avenues in the community where, you know, we were addressing um, things about what was going on in, in the world, uh, in our world here. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, we got um, the local hospital to commission us to do a video about, um, about uh, transgender healthcare and use it as a training video for um, staff. And it's now um, a mandatory uh, training video that everybody watches when they come into the um, hospital. Um, it's also been shared. Um, I've had friends in nursing programs that are using it in their classrooms uh, and stuff like that. So this video kind of breaks it down um, in scenes um, about four different uh, people. So you've got like a non-binary per non person, a trans man, a trans woman, um, and an intersex person. And so, Eamon, the showing of this new training video that you all created has led to some big changes in how this whole chain of hospitals serves the needs of gay, lesbian, trans, and bisexual uh, clients, right? This is so cool to me as a trans person because the theater event inspired the video, which is now inspiring doctors, um, specialty doctors, to get let, uh, refer people for surgery that's necessary for trans people to feel more at home with their bodies if um, they want to do that. We want to be able to prescribe uh, hormone replacement therapy um, and all of this kind of stuff. So they're actually like, really actually getting this training. They're having doctors come over from Seattle to help the doctors here um, learn how to deal with this stuff. And um, the dialogue started because of, um, it's like this mutual, like the healthcare equity committee was a thing at the time of the legislative theater event. But between the two of them, like this yeah, event happened and then yeah, literally it's just kind of like a domino effect happened. Um, I'm curious, uh, in doing legislative theater, this project or other projects, have you had a similar experience to, to Tori in the story where you actually opened up a can of worms that were, was difficult to, to deal with, uh, once you opened it up? Difficult to deal with. I'm not sure. What do you mean by difficult to deal with? What I mean more than you had expected. Oh, yeah. Um, if, if I'm going to answer that question, that I have never seen more difficulty than I expect. I always <laughs> expect people to be stimulated by the material. There's transphobia, right? And there's probably transphobia in the room when we're doing that pro project. Yeah, there, there's people um, on all different angles of any issue. Uh, would, it, would it be useful? I mean, I don't know if this is backtracking or following the track that you're on, but would it be useful? Because you asked about the conversation the, and the, the difficult conversation. I mean, every social justice issue is a difficult conversation. You want to talk about race. You want to talk about youth and adults, you know, uh, and just youth issues, period. School, that was a major factor of our legislative theater project was was the education system we haven't talked about that but we had high school principals showing up many actually all all of the local high school and middle school principals showing up for this legislative theater event and they were being made to look bad on stage that's a difficult conversation so but it, but but we can do it we've done it with police and youth you know where the, the youth are, are able to raise their middle finger at police on stage. But it's okay because of the container of the art of the theater. But it's a genuine middle finger right in a uniformed, bulletproof vested, gun toting Seattle police officer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we've, uh, that's, but that's what theater can do. You can hold these difficult conversations. The kind of conversations we're talking about are not limited to an interaction between two people. You know, and, and in order to sustain the conversation, in fact, we need that ebb and flow of many people and then really strategic people and then um, 
you know, definitely centering the voices of the people who are being most affected by the issue that we're, we're tackling, and that we continue to center those voices. It, it can get out of hand where the legislators or perhaps even the activists and organizers on the ground like to take the lead and maybe make some, do some guesswork about what's needed. And so there's a, a, a strong request, maybe even I'd say a red flag around just ensuring that the conversation continues to center and include the people who are most affected by the issue that is being tackled. Awesome. Awesome. Mandala Center, thank you from New Orleans, really. It's been a pleasure. Um, good luck. You.